Welcome back, all you blockheads, to another episode of Video Game World Tours. A series where we slow down and soak in a game's environment. Today's tour takes us to a place that felt massive for the time. A place that left its mark on many. A place that changed gaming forever. Grand Theft Auto 3's Liberty City. You start the game in Portland. Not long after gaining control and exploring a bit, you really feel the working class vibes of the district. Especially through the buildings. Something about these just feels sad. They're packed so closely together, and the colors are plain and drab. There's even one street that's practically falling apart. Portland and Liberty City just seems like a nasty place to live. But it does have some cool spots. One of the early mission givers, Luigi, runs a little club. You come back here a lot during the first couple hours of the game. But while scouting for spots to cover in this video, I noticed something I hadn't before. A staircase that leads you to the top of the building. Most of the game has you scurrying around the city streets as an errand boy, and it's rare that you'll ever go up to a rooftop. But this one is interesting in that no mission brings you up here. The only thing of note is a hidden package. And believe me, you'll be seeing a lot of these. It's like Rockstar placed them at spots they knew I'd want to cover. But yeah, it's a detailed little spot up here. If you have a keen eye, you'll notice you can actually jump to a few different rooftops. Eventually, you'll discover another hidden package. I kind of like the escalation of secrets there. Like you have the hidden package on Luigi's Club. This is a secret spot that's kind of off the beaten path. But if you go off the beaten path of off the beaten path, you'll find another secret. A hidden spot within a hidden spot. Cute. Salvatore Leone's mansion is another place you'll be coming back to a lot. This is a location I actually discovered before the story brings you here. I was exploring not long after starting the game and stumbled across this massive house. It's completely out of place compared to the densely packed, boring buildings everywhere else. It also caught my eye that this has an enterable interior. Granted, there's a lot of this building you don't get to see, but even this tiny sliver of a living space stands out considering 99.9% .9 of buildings have no interiors. And just the location itself stood out to me. Salvatore's a rich man, he can afford a pretty big plot of land. Looking around, there's not much of interest to see, but it's fun to explore anyway. Like look at this big plot of grass he has behind the building. He's literally doing nothing with it right now, it's just empty space. Though it does have a great view, even Salvatore could appreciate that. He had little benches built here. Say, in my whole time in Portland, I don't think a single mission brought me to the beach down there. Let's go take a look at it. Oh, I also wanted to point out this cliffside. The urban sprawl of Portland cuts off at the entrance to Salvatore's mansion. As you can see, the path leads to the left here. But if you were to go off-roading, you can see what the back of all these buildings look like. I don't know what I expected. All the buildings are merged together into one long, flat plain. And there are no hidden packages here. They did not expect the player to find themselves in this spot. There are definitely more obscure spots that I'll cover in this video. But I think this is the one Rockstar last expected the player to be in. Most of them, like the rooftop of Luigi's Club, are Rockstar-sanctioned secret spots. This is a pretzel-sanctioned secret spot. Okay, enough of that. The beach. Yep, this is a beach. It's pretty empty. Obviously no buildings or anything down here, but no people either. I said I don't remember coming to the beach for a mission, but there might have been one that does bring you here. I beat the main story and some of the side missions, but I didn't play every single one. Maybe some phone mission brings you here, I don't know. As it is though, with the knowledge I have, it feels surprisingly empty. 
A single vehicle spawn. That's all there is here. Not even a hidden package. Come on, there's a hundred of those in the game. They didn't even think to put one on this massive beach? What were they thinking? There's Salvatore's house up there. The beach kinda gets steep right around the foundation supporting his building, but if you're crafty enough, you can get by. Now this is a really hidden out area. Cliff sides and ocean cover almost all points of entry into this chunk of the map. Like I said, I haven't played all the missions in this game, but I'd be willing to bet a fair stack of cash that there is no objective that brings you here. I had to look to see if there was a hidden package in this area at all, and the closest I could find is the one on that cliff up there. But you only reach that by falling down from Salvatore's mansion. All this space is completely irrelevant to that. Like, why is all this here? Why isn't all this just water? Rockstar, if you're watching, leave a comment telling me why this exists. Nearby is a massive concrete platform that lines most of the island here. That's another thing that struck me as weird. Look at how wide this is. What's its purpose? Why isn't there just a cliff here? Is this something that makes sense in real life and I'm just missing the point? Maybe. Either way, it makes for a bizarre video game space. This game is full of areas that feel suspiciously wide and open. I'd say that almost defines the game's world for me. Of course, there is the city, and that's what I think of first when I think of this game. But these weird and wide areas give the game a unique identity. Like look at how far I've been driving, and there's nothing of interest. Keep in mind, cars aren't supposed to be up here. This isn't a road or anything. Falling off this ledge onto another concrete path, this feels a bit more appropriate. I can imagine this existing in real life. Taking the weird path back to where we were before, I have another weirdly wide spot to show. Well, not really wide, it's more so long. Out in the back of 8 Ball's auto yard, there are some train tracks. Train tracks usually lead to more train tracks, and sure enough, there's a tunnel cutting straight through the hillside. It's interesting that all these bushes kind of obscure where the tracks lead though. How long has this path been abandoned? Well, you take one step into the tunnel and realize the train tracks don't actually go into it. They cut off right before. That's weird. We start walking down the tunnel and… nothing for a bit. The game's really building up tension. I wonder what secret will be revealed. Oh, there's something. What could it be? Some homeless people huddling around a hidden package. Maybe it gives them warmth. I'll leave it for them. That can't be all you're supposed to find in here. Surely there's something amazing at the end of it. It'd be super cool if it's a dead end. That would be an amazing hidden spot. Oh. It just lets you out on the other side of the mountain, right where we first drove onto the beach. That's kind of boring. Oh well, one more spot in Portland before moving on. The whole southern side of the map is pretty much the port for the city. A lot of docks and shipping containers litter the landscape here. The Portland Harbor is a chunky space with a lot of crevices to explore. But I just want to show off this dock. I don't know, it's kind of a memorable spot for me. The way it sticks out so far into the water seems weird. I guess it makes sense for unloading massive ships that need somewhere to dock, but the width of the dock doesn't feel big enough for that. It's only about three shipping containers wide. It kind of fits the purpose it was designed for, but not really. You know what I mean? The end of the dock has a hidden package, so you know this is a good spot. I kinda like just staring out at the ocean here. You can really feel cramped at times with all the buildings looming over you, so it's nice to have a spot that's just super open. Before we get into the next spot, I just want to take a moment to shout out my Patreon. Supporting me over there means I can focus more on the videos I want to make, rather than chasing the algorithm here on YouTube. If you like what I'm doing, throw me a buck or two. It means a lot. 
Or don't. Who am I to tell you what to do? Though you do have to like and subscribe. That's part of the contract you signed when you clicked this video. Okay, so put yourself in the mindset of a kid back in the day. You're playing Grand Theft Auto 3, and you're progressing through the missions. Portland must have felt massive to a child's mind back then. Out of nowhere, one mission has you hop on a boat and ride over to a whole other island. A brand new play space opens up for you to explore. And get this, it's bigger than Portland. One of my favorite parts of a Grand Theft Auto game is the progression of your relationship with the map. At first, you know nothing about the world around you. It's a brand new space just begging to be explored. So you do that. Maybe you play the main story missions and let the game drip feed locations to you. Or maybe you explore yourself and discover locations at your own pace. Kinda like how I discovered Salvatore's mansion before the story brought me there. Then, as you play more and more, you form a mental map of the space. Which is especially important in this game because there's no GPS to give you a direct path to your objective. You see the general direction an objective is in, but you have to pathfind there yourself. Eventually, you get really good at it. You remember the layout of the city's streets and can traverse them practically on autopilot. It reminds me of the days when I was younger and I'd become obsessed with and play just one particular game, where I'd be super familiar with it and it'd become a second home to me. I love that about GTA 3. And it's even cooler that you get to experience that feeling multiple times. You have it first in Portland, and then you have it here on Staunton Island. The vibes are completely different here. This is more of a commercial district, and you feel that in a lot of ways. The layout is a bit more spacious, buildings are taller, and overall it just feels a bit nicer. Another thing I noticed when scouting spots for this video is that some of the buildings have panes of glass that you can break through. I'm so used to buildings on the street being unenterable, I never thought to look at them and search for ones you potentially can enter. All I've found so far are these two on the same street. This one's an internet cafe. Illegible screen there. Hey, that's actually one of the first Grand Theft Autos. I haven't played much of the series before 3, so I don't know which one, but it's definitely one of them. Cute little easter egg. Holy shit, that's the Daily Bugle! Says the guy whose only experience to New York City is through Spider-Man. That, that's me, I'm Guy. Got your Central Park analog? Can't have a fictional version of New York City without a fake Central Park. Nice little nature spot in an otherwise intensely urban area. Here's a pond with a tiny island in the center. Claude can't swim, but thankfully, this isn't that deep. There's also a house in Central Park? I don't think you could just buy a house in Central Park IRL. Plus, there's some weird tracks coming out of the garage leading into the pond. Is that supposed to be tracks for a boat or something? I don't think a boat would do too well in a pond this small. Peculiar. Of course, I have to talk about the iconic, dingy bathrooms of Central Park. One of the mission givers hangs out here. The waypoint to trigger the mission is right outside the door, but you can actually go inside yourself. It's interesting that there's preset camera angles in here, like Resident Evil. I guess they thought that the freely controllable camera was too unwieldy for such a small space. I don't blame them for that. I don't know what else to actually say about this. It's just a bathroom. But it's a fun bathroom. Fort Staunton is a big old construction site with a lot of empty space. You come here a few times during the story, but I never really explored this place. Here's a building that's coming along nicely. I came up here to get a good shot of some bad guys in one mission. Hmm, there's a way upstairs. Some health and armor. A hidden package, too. Alright, that's a 5 out of 10 spot. We'll see what else this place got. Oh wow, there's a whole other area back here. I never noticed that. Pretty big space. Anything of note? Hmm. Nah, there's nothing that interesting. 
This feels like a spot you'd have a shootout in during one of the missions I didn't play. I think I've seen enough of this construction site. How do I get out of here? Oh hey! A hidden AK-47 pickup! This is what I was expecting to find back here. A tiny little nook with a pickup or package. I should have known Rockstar wouldn't let me down. Okay, I do gotta move on though. Just across the street is Liberty Campus. It's a set of buildings surrounding a courtyard area that really sticks out to me. This does feel like an appropriately chill place for a college campus. You know, it kind of reminds me of a courtyard I covered back in my Spider-Man 2 video. That game also took place in Manhattan, so I wonder if these are both based on the same real-life location. Didn't expect to be bringing up Spider-Man so much in a GTA tour, but here we are. The last spot I want to talk about on Staten Island is this long path curving around the north coast. The scenery here is really nice. The path is well maintained, the lampposts are nice, and you're really close to the water. I just hope the water's clean. You can't really tell, but I'll choose to live in blissful ignorance. This water doesn't actually smell and look like sewery poop sludge. It's clean and clear water. The path does get a little weird though. It leads you straight up this unnaturally steep hill. I feel like even on steps this would be hard to climb, let alone a smooth slope. You'd probably just slide down. Also, there's a massive cliffside. Maybe I'm just in a mood where everything feels unnatural, but the path feels awkward because of that. Like there's no railing or anything separating you from this rock face. Who knows what kind of large boulder the size of a small boulder might fall off and crush you. The path goes on for a while. Eventually, it abruptly ends. I kinda like the view from here though. Gazing out at the water and the island you'll no doubt explore soon. Before we go to the final map chunk, I want to shout out the methods of transportation between them. Everyone knows the bridges, these are nothing special honestly. I got so used to using them that I genuinely forgot there was not one other way to travel between islands, but two. A car tunnel and a subway. Let's look at the tunnel first. There's honestly not much to say about the tunnel here. This is just a long ass tunnel that stretches from one end of Liberty City to the other. Though the length kinda makes it intriguing. This is probably the longest road you can drive in the whole game. In a way, it makes you appreciate the size of the game world. I was trying to figure out if being able to drive the length of the map in one continuous path makes the map feel small or big, and I'm not sure. It kinda does both, honestly. It feels like a long drive because it's kinda boring down here, but it's also just a minute or so trip. It's Schrodinger's Tunnel. The subway is a bit more interesting. They actually have fully modeled subway stations. I really like the red floor texture. I feel like it's supposed to be dingy considering we're in a subway station, but it's more comforting than dingy to me. This station has two platforms and to reach the one on the other side, you have to go through a little hallway. You know, I try not to bring it up too much, because I feel like it's a trite comparison to make, but this really does feel backroomsy. Like I can imagine being lost in a maze of hallways exactly like this. Actually, I remember a game that came out recently that kinda goes for that vibe. Yeah, The Exit 8. I haven't played it but this really does seem like a good setting for a horror game. Unfortunately, this is just an action game. No spooky, unending hallways here. So we'll leave the station and arrive at the final section of Liberty City, Shoreside Vale. This is the residential area of Liberty City, the suburbs. But before we explore the houses, I have a place to show you real quick. Here's some, what I can only assume to be, apartment complexes. Next to them is a lone dirt path. The road and sidewalk abruptly end where the grass starts. Let's head down and see what awaits us. Kind of a long path. 
Oh, here we go. Hmm, it's just an empty lot with some benches. Tables as well. I guess this is a park? Seems like the parking lot to park ratio is a little off though. There's only like three tables down here. The only other thing of note is that entering this car starts a side mission. So that's cool, I guess. A place that definitely has more importance though is in the suburbs. I don't even need to say it, but these homes are beautiful. You don't see buildings like this anywhere else in Liberty City, excluding Salvatore's mansion. Some of these even have pools you can jump in. The one I want to focus on is Catalina's house. This is where the final mission of the game starts. And if you want to come in outside of that mission, you can't. The gate is locked. But I never let that stop me. Here's the plan. I suggest getting an ambulance. Maybe another tall vehicle could work, but an ambulance is the easiest to use, I think. Steal one from the nearby hospital and drive it right up to the gate. Get another vehicle that's a bit lower to the ground and park it right against the ambulance. Jump on that, then jump to the ambulance and hop over the gate. I'm in. Nothing has changed since you came here for the mission, so there's nothing new to notice. It's kind of cool to just come back and reminisce about the good old days. Like when I ran around to this corner to escape gunfire and notice the empty pool. Something I didn't really pay attention to back then is this steep wall. I feel like it should be a cliffside or something, but the fact that it just uses this grass texture is weird. There's also a garage with an armor pickup. That was definitely useful back then. And there's also a cartel cruiser. Wait a minute. Of course. Of course the gate will just open if you're in the cartel cruiser. I forgot that the game teaches you how you're allowed in certain areas if you're in a specific vehicle. The who's opening this gate? Catalina and her crew were killed. Cartel ghost, maybe? Speaking of Catalina and her crew getting killed, Cochrane Dam. The location of the final showdown. This is another place that's nice to hang out in when you're not getting rained down upon by gunfire. Super wide and long area with lots of cover. I particularly like these vantage points. You gotta climb a hardy staircase to reach it, but once you do, you get a good view. At the end of the path is a staircase that leads you up to a building's roof. Perfect little place for the end of the game. But we're not done yet. We've yet to visit my favorite spot in the game. Francis International Airport. This is the peak of the game's big and empty vibes. I mean, it makes sense for an airport to be big and empty, considering how large planes are and how much space they need to move around. But I genuinely can't think of a series other than Grand Theft Auto that features airports and just lets them be so massive. Leave a comment if you can think of any other iconic video game airports. It's so cool to be able to just burn some rubber and hit incredibly high speeds down these straightaways. Walking around this would be a nightmare. It's great that you're able to bring a car in here. Something else I think is cool is that while later games in the series will give you wanted stars upon entering the airport, this game doesn't. It's a fun idea to basically make you public enemy number one the millisecond you step onto the airport tarmac. But I also appreciate that this airport is such a chill place. No other people or vehicles around to distract you. You can just explore to your heart's content. And there's a lot of exploring to do here. I might have undersold just how big this area is. Even in a super fast car, it takes you a minute to get from one end to the other. I think having a place like this is what really made Grand Theft Auto such a popular series. They were dedicated to making Liberty City feel like a real world. It was revolutionary for the time to just be dropped in a semi-realistic world and be able to explore it. After all, who wouldn't want to put the pedal to the metal on an airport tarmac? Grand Theft Auto 3 lets you live out that dream. 
Check out either of these videos up next. I just played this game for the first time for this video, and I really enjoyed myself. I'll definitely cover the other games in the series sometime in the future. Get subscribed to see those whenever they come out. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.